stop. You're not getting anywhere with this von Borschert. You know, I kind of get the same feeling, my dear Sarah. Listen. Nothing. Not a sound. No one's coming to save you. Huh, that's what you think. The Golden Order knows exactly where we are. <laughs> By the time your ridiculous secret society turns up, I'll be long gone. As for you, nothing will remain of your body. If you touch a single hair on my mother's head, I'll skin you alive. You know, Louis, I have no intention of beating your dear mother. There are more persuasive ways of making you talk. You've stolen something from me that I intend to get back. Where have you hidden it? Von Borschert, you can't sell that book on the black market anymore. This is finished. We know you're planning on selling it at one of Lord Mortimer's parties. All right? Just tell us who the buyer is and we can make a deal. You've no idea of the trouble you've gotten yourselves into. Oh, but you will tell me where it's hidden. I can promise you that. Ugh. 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 Stop annoying our host, Louis. Son. Didn't what happened to you in Rome teach you anything? Just a few more minutes and my concoction will be ready. With this, your bodies will dissolve in less than four hours. You'll see. It loosens tongues in no time. You know, I have to admit, Mother, the only thing you've ever taught me is that Damn motto of yours. Always remain rational and open. I got it. I've opened the shackles. Draw him over here. I'll take care of him. Von Borchard. Von Borchard. Mm -hmm. Listen. Let's make a deal. I'll tell you where the book is if you let my mother go free. Oh, what are you playing at? Don't worry, mother. You want to play the hero. Pity you're not in any position to do so. For the last time. Where is Alazif? Let me do this. Trust me. Please, be my guest, Mother. Mm. Ah. Done, Louis. You reacted perfectly. How do you feel, Mother? Couldn't be better. He's alive, so I can question him after we get back. Pity he's just a middleman. Hmm. Means I haven't finished with this case. Oh, I had a feeling you'd be running off on one of your adventures again, Mother. You know what? I'm warning you. This time, I'm coming with you. No. Even though you impress me more and more, I have to do this on my own. Mother, you're no spring chicken anymore. Come on, let's go home. And don't forget to send our men to tend to Von Borchardt. Well done, Mother. 
You just had to pick up Bob Burchard's trail on your own, didn't you? You ditch me in Paris with no explanation, and off you go to infiltrate one of the world-renowned receptions of this Lord Mortimer? And now he writes me to say that you've gone missing on his private island? Which, by the way, looks more like a big rock than a paradise island. The least he could do is explain to me how he managed to lose you. In any case, it is time for you to stop all this, Mother. It no longer suits your age. Well, I'm sure I'll find you once again, slogging through the caves beneath the island, searching for some long-lost mystical object that you just can't live without. I'm already hating this trip, and all I've done is think about it. Contrary to what one may be able to imagine, it was not the host himself who invited me. Well now, Duchess, we find ourselves both invited by Sir Hall. Well, how very amusing. Perhaps we have some common interests, Your Eminence. Is this your first time at one of Lord Mortimer's legendary parties? Oh, no. We have been friends since long ago. But as I'm doing some business with Sir Hall, the invitation came from him. Well, I simply can't wait for all the festivities to begin. And you good, sir. What brings you here? Your Eminence, with all due respect, I prefer to keep my reasons for coming here to myself. I promise it has nothing to do with the legendary party that you all appear to be preparing for. I believe what you will, my son. However, everything is related to the legendary parties organized by our host. Yeah, I'll be the judge of that, Cardinal. Anyway, consider yourself fortunate, young man. Because there are many who dream of simply one day setting foot on this island. And only a very few ever make it. Indeed, I imagine this must be your first time here. And you, Duchess? You seem to be quite accustomed to things here. Am I right? I do not think that one can ever get accustomed to what Lord Mortimer prepares for his guests. But you are right. This is not the first time I've been on this wharf. If you've come back again, I imagine you must find it to be of some interest. Here, everything is possible if you make the right choices. It really is up to you whether you leave better off or not. Please excuse me if you find me overly curious, young man. I did not mean to cause you any embarrassment. Come, Duchess. They are waiting for us. We're moving, Monsieur de Richet, if you would like to join us. I'm coming, Duchess. A cardinal? A duchess? I wonder if all the guests here are this prestigious. If I'd known, I, I would have gone for a better suit. Ah! Are you all right? Mother? Oh shit, your hand! So? Okay, it's done. Did you put it in a safe place? Yes. I made sure no one was following me. Don't worry, Sarah, no one's going to find it. Are you absolutely sure? Yes, I'm sure. Right. Just one thing left to no, do. No, Mother, don't, don't! What? Have you lost your mind? There's no other way. If you... if you kill me, you won't find it. That is the point, my dear. No one must ever put their hands on it again. No. But... I trusted you. No, Sarah! Don't! No! No! <gasps> you can run if you want to, Sarah. But you will pay for it. You. Uh, Louis, are you all right? What's going on? Here, take this. I'm sorry. Keep it. Are you better? 
I'm fine. Don't worry. It's getting late. Why don't why don't you just go on ahead and I'll catch up with you, okay? Are you sure? Yes. I'm sorry. I'm sure. Yes. Fine. I definitely have to find Mother quickly. Am I going crazy or, or what? This can't be real. The, the Duchess arrived with me. What's happening to me, for God's sake? I absolutely need to find you, Mother. Louis, during the trip, I had something I wanted to ask you, but we didn't happen to run into each other. Yes, Duchess? I'm not sure if you remember, but we've met before. At that time, you were of two minds as to your choice of career. Tell me, what have you been up to since? Well, over the last few years, I've solved a number of crime cases. Like the Chauffeur d'Orgère, for example. Thieves that tortured their victims with burning embers. Hmm, charming. How did you catch them? I told the most cowardly one that the others had given him up. Ah, and I wager your thief suddenly started to talk. You wouldn't believe it. He told us everything. The jobs, the stashes, the names of his partners. Couldn't shut him up. I heard about that case, but I didn't know you were the one who solved it. Mm, I'm flattered that the news made it across the channel. And you've got a darn good memory, Duchess. Well, they say I have the memory of two people. But please, call me Emily. Fine, Emily. Tell me. I was actually helped on that case by my mother. You wouldn't know her by any chance. Wait, Louis. We've already met. You do remember me, don't you? Please excuse me, madam. I'm sure we've met before, but I don't remember where. Hmm. I appreciate your honesty, even if it's not very flattering for me. I imagine that with your beauty, madam, it's the first time a man hasn't remembered your face. Well, I must say, you make up for yourself rather elegantly. Please stop torturing me. I'm completely at your mercy. Where have we met? Four years ago, in London? No, sorry. I don't remember. In the office of William Pitt. Remember? No? I'm so sorry, Emily, but I really don't remember you. Let's drop it, Louis. It doesn't matter. Right, time to go to the manor. I ask her a question, she answers with another. Is she playing with me? Emily, please excuse my insisting, but you still haven't answered about my mother. Do you know her? You'll see, Louis. Everybody here knows Sarah de Richet. I don't know where we're going like this, Emily. But you're connected to my mother one way or another. And if I can believe my vision, you don't have much of a place in her heart. Good evening, sir. May I ask your name, please? Louis Moras de Richet. Monsieur de Richet, delighted to welcome you among us, sir. You must be Sarah de Richet's son. I must tell you, we are doing our utmost to find your mother as quickly as possible. I have an appointment with Lord Mortimer. Would you be so kind as to lead me to him? Unfortunately, sir, I cannot. I don't know exactly where my master is. But rest assured, sir, everyone is waiting for you at the manor. Sir Holm insists on welcoming you in person. Since your mother went missing, Everyone has been concerned about finding her. Who is Sir Holm? A close friend of Lord Mortimer's. Please, rest assured, sir, it won't take us long to find your revered mother. Indeed, we are searching the caves again because lights were seen at the wharf just last night. Where we are now? Indeed, sir. According to our information, lights were seen in the middle of the night, sir. After verification, none of the guests seemed to have left the manor last night. We think that perhaps Sir's mother was here. And did you find anything then? We discovered a certain amount of damage, sir, on the wooden part of the wharf. What type of damage? Broken barrels, mainly. 
we'll do whatever is necessary to have them rapidly repaired. But quite frankly, I can't imagine what Sir's mother would have been doing with them. What could Mother have been doing with barrels? Nevertheless, our search of the wharf hasn't been entirely unsuccessful, though. What do you mean? We seem to have found an object that would appear to belong to Sir's mother. A handkerchief. The handkerchief is embroidered with the initials S.D.R. We came to the conclusion that they are the initials of Sir's mother, Sarah de Richet. I have orders to give it to Lord Mortimer as soon as I see him. I know my mother. She's not the kind to go for a midnight stroll on the wharf for nothing. I've got to find out what the hell she was doing here. Where exactly did you find the handkerchief? On the landing dock, sir. The one you arrived by. Give me the handkerchief. I'll personally show it to Lord Mortimer. Well, I... I've traveled hard for several days in order to get here. Yes, but... Invited by your master. No, of course, but... Because my mother went missing right under your nose. Sir, please, I... And having only just arrived, you refused to give me her personal belongings? Of course not, sir. It was never my intention to contradict, sir. Here you are. I must return now. It is still much to prepare in order to welcome all the guests. It is indeed your handkerchief, Mother. You must have come here for a specific reason. I need to know what it is. Let's think. What could she have been doing out here on this wharf? wooden floorboard. Probably comes from this part of the wharf. The wood is slightly eaten away, of course, but it still would have been fine if it weren't smashed. Judging by the splinters of the wood, this floorboard has been ripped up, yet it was in decent condition. I wonder why someone ripped it up. What's the point of doing this? Judging by the splinters of the wood, this floorboard has been ripped up, yet it was in decent condition. I wonder why someone ripped it up. What's the point of doing this? Never get it open barehanded. I think this chest might belong to Duchess Hillsborough. Must be an incredible view from up there. Impossible to set foot on the island without being seen from 300 meters away. Looks like the barrel's been broken for quite some time. Honey, the remedy of the gods. Some rope. Apparently no one's touched it for a good long time. A lantern, nothing special. Let's see what's hidden inside. Ah, one of the letters is stamped with the seal of the order. And I'd recognize your handwriting anywhere, mother. But who is this Samuel Ritter Doshua? 
Who are you writing to? I don't recognize the name. Let's see what's inside this letter. So. Dear Samuel, my stay on Lord Mortimer's Island is going wonderfully well. As I find myself in such charming company, I plan to stay a few more weeks. Would you be so kind as to send me a gift that I'd like to give to our old friend Manuel Godoy? I would be most grateful. I have been told that he is going to join us here soon. I would like to mark the occasion. Thank you in advance. Yours devotedly, Sarah Faustine de Richer. What is your game here, Mother? Secrets, always more secrets. You've never talked to anyone using language like this. Something's going on here. Who is this Samuel Ritter? And for crying out loud, who is this Manuel Godoy that you keep bringing up? Think. Godoy, Godoy, Manuel Godoy. Why does the name sound so familiar? I'm guessing he's a man of some importance. Spanish, I'd say. But just can't put a face to him. Well, hope we meet to talk about it soon, Mother. I don't know what you've gotten yourself into this time, but I'll bet you've got a lot to tell me. How did Mortimer manage to build his manor at the top of a rocky outcrop? Impressive. Ah, my son. I was looking for you. What can I do for you, Your Eminence? I wanted to ask you. You are the son of Sara de Vice, aren't you? You see, your mother and I were supposed to meet here on this very spot. I was supposed to hand her a very important envelope. But I haven't seen her. If only Mother had told me why she was coming here. Anyway, I ought to take the envelope. It might have something to do with her disappearance. Listen, if it will help, you can always give it to me. Thank you, my son. I'll bear that in mind. I'd rather deal with her directly. Don't take it personally. Would you happen to know if your mother has arrived yet? Certainly, your eminence. Mother got here some time ago. I was hoping to find her when I arrived, but... Given the hour, she must be asleep by now. Right. I shall see her tomorrow, then. By the way, Your Eminence, I wasn't aware you knew my mother. Ah, if you only knew my son, I hold your mother in the highest regard. She has rendered great service to the Church, and her help is invaluable. I hope that you will follow in her footsteps. <sighs> if only she had told me where she was headed. Nonetheless, our exchanges have always been discreet, and I should like them to remain as such. If your mother wishes to speak to you about us one day, I will not mind if she does so. That is commendable. But as we work together on a daily basis, it is surely just an oversight. Most certainly. You said you work together. What do you do exactly? My mother and I belong to the same secret organization, the Golden Order, which I joined a few years ago. Mother trained me, and I assist in her research. In other words, you can trust me. 
my child, you are telling a perfect stranger that you and your mother work for a secret society. It would seem that discretion is not one of your specialities, my son. You will understand that it does not encourage me to put my trust in you. Shit! All the same, it bothers me to see you in a quandary, Your Eminence. Is there any other solution? Look, if it's of any help, you can always leave your envelope with me and I'll give it to her as soon as I see her. Ah, uh, I hesitate. Up till now, we have always dealt with her in person, and that has always been successful. Do you think I should give it to you? Only you know that, Your Eminence. If you're asking me if you can trust me, or if I can keep a secret, I would answer yes, absolutely. I understand. In truth, it all depends on the nature of the contents of your letter. It is a list of names. This list must be of extreme importance. Ah, if only you knew. It's a list of people that your mother must help. Listen to me. If I give you the letter, can you promise me before God that no one other than your mother will read it? I swear by the Almighty God to honor the promise that no one but my mother shall cast her gaze upon your letter. Good. Listen, let's stop there. I'm going to tell you a secret, Monsieur de Ricci. Your mother and I are organizing the escape of a large number of French priests who face a massacre organized by the accursed Republican tribunals. The church is literally being bled like a beast. Without your mother, hundreds of men of the cloth would have gone to the guillotine. She has made the services of your order available to us by organizing the priest's safe passage across the borders. Even if she does not share all our convictions, she always provided assistance. Young man, you can be proud to be her son. Be it only for her sake. Always respect your name. Here, the letter I spoke of. It includes a list of about 15 names ready for departure. Be quick. Remember to tell Sarah when you see her, that time is short. Well played. I'll decide later when I'm alone whether to look at what it contains. Blind Oedipus. Blinded himself. What a tragic destiny. Lives of the Noble Greeks and Romans by Plutarch. A biography of the great men. I thought my chimney was big, but this one is beyond belief. It's the least one can say. I've been longing for a warm fire for ages. Since I set foot on the island, I haven't ventured more than two yards away from it. Have you also just arrived? Oh, late morning, I'd say. Louis, come join us. Monsieur, may I introduce you to Monseigneur His Eminence, Cardinal Piaggi? He joins us straight from Rome. Oh, just call me Your Eminence. It's simpler. George Washington, President of the United States of America. Delighted at last to make your acquaintance, Mr. President. Pleased to meet you, Mr. President. Louis Maurras de Richet, it is an honor to meet you. Young man, let's keep it simple, please. Let us forget our fancy titles. Nice to meet you, Louis. I should imagine you never thought you'd be in such company. I must admit that I didn't. It's the first time that I've ever met so many illustrious personalities. 
and you haven't seen anything yet. Generally, when Lord Mortimer organizes one of his receptions, there are over a dozen people here. They can't all be here yet, and you'll see, most of the time there's only the upper crust. And I noticed you were already getting to know his eminence at the entrance. It's the perfect place to build up a network. What were you talking about, if you'll forgive my indiscretion? At the risk of disappointing you, we weren't conspiring in our corner, sir. His eminence was simply telling me that he knew my mother and how much he held her in high esteem. It so happens that Monsieur de Ricci's mother is to join us. Oh, pity. No scrumptious gossip or juicy tidbits, unmentionable secrets, or even money matters. But you'll see, it will come. Despite all the goodwill in the world, you can't stop people scheming left and right around oh, here. Speak for yourself, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, my friends, do any of you know the reason why we're here this time? Not in the slightest. As for me, I've been invited by Sir Horn, a close friend of Lord Mortimer, but uh, I do not know the reason why. You see, Louis, every time Lord Mortimer organizes a reception, he always finds a moment to set up a chat with all the guests. During which time we remake the world. Accompanied by gallons of absinthe and cussing, I'll leave you to imagine the result. So, if I understand rightly, Monsieur de Richet, you've come out here to join your mother. For what reason, exactly? Like you, Mr. President, I'm here as a result of Lord Mortimer's invitation. Two members of the same family here. That is rare. You know what they say. You can pick your nose, but you can't pick your family. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, though, I know your mother well. Stay behind with me afterwards, and we'll take a moment to speak about her. Good Lord, Washington is wearing the emblem of the Grand Master of the Golden Order. It's the highest distinction of the Order in the United States. It puts him on par with my mother. He must really know his stuff when it comes to the occult. Good evening, my friend. Holy shit, that's the man for my vision. An urgent case has delayed our host, Lord Mortimer. He can't be present this evening, and he sends his deepest apologies. He's asked me here and he hasn't even turned up? Great start. And now, my dear guests, a light meal is served in the small salon. For those who would like to, you're invited to follow me into the next room. My dear fellow, you must have read my thoughts. I shall follow. We'll have to be careful not to make too much noise. One of Lord Mortimer's guests is relaxing. Oh. We shall be quiet. Don't take it the wrong way, Sir Holm, but I have already eaten. Thus, I shall be happy to remain by the fireside. If you don't mind, Gregory, I should like to keep Mr. Washington company. Please feel at home. And you, sir? If I stay with Washington, we'll be able to speak about my mother. But on the other hand, I'd like to learn more about this home. I saw him in my vision. My vision is more important. Let's follow home. I'll follow you, sir. Mr. Washington, I hope to speak with you at greater length on another occasion. Emily, please excuse me, but I would like to speak to Sir Holm. I shall see you later. My friend, I hope our dear Giovanni is well. Ah, the troubles in France have fatigued him, but he would recover slowly. Do not fear. He apologizes for remaining in Rome. The voyage was too much for him. And right he was too. The mildness of the Mediterranean, eh? Come, sit down and have something to eat, my friend. You look rather pale. Excuse me, sir. I have been neglecting my duty. I haven't introduced myself. Sir Gregory Holm, an old friend of Lord Mortimer's. A real pleasure, sir. You who must be well used to the court of France, how do you find this peaceful little haven? 
charming if I hadn't come here for disturbing reasons. Yes, I heard the news. What a story. Indeed. I wanted to ask you. You seem to know my mother well, is that true? <laughs> Who does not know of her, sir? She has such a wide circle that everyone knows your mother from a distance or close up. Everyone knows Sarah, my son. But you only know her by her reputation. I remember she once worked for the Crown of England and that she always honors her engagements. However, we have never been personally introduced, sadly. Well, if I'm to believe my vision, you're not going to get along with her. Thank you for your answers, Sir Holm. But I beg your pardon. I get the impression I know you. Have we met? Except in my dreams, of course. Not that I remember, young man. Perhaps you are mistaking me for another member of the Chamber of Lords. And what with the wig and the powder, it wouldn't be the first time. No, you were definitely the one I saw threatening my mother. I thought... never mind. It'll come back to me. Would you allow me one last question, sir? I don't want to take up all your time. Uh, please, go ahead. Um, what do you want to know? Do you know the reason for my mother's presence here? I haven't the slightest idea, no. She was invited by Lord Mortimer. But you don't know why? Not really. I was given to understand that your mother was looking for something. And do you know how long my mother and Lord Mortimer have known each other? Several years, I believe. They seem to know each other for quite a while. But it was the first time that Lord Mortimer had invited her to join us here. Good. And finally, would it be possible for me to speak with Lord Mortimer this evening? I'm terribly sorry, no. He really is quite unavailable. But please rest assured that everyone is doing their best to find your mother. All the same, it's not the Chateau de Versailles. It can't be that difficult to find her. Worry not, my son. I am persuaded that we shall find the famous Sara de Riche. No doubt with new adventures to share, huh? <laughs> Did you rest in your room? Do you want me to call someone? Let me handle this. I'm used to this kind of thing. Miss, can, can you hear me? Leave me. Her breathing is becoming stable and... Her heart rate, too. Pale complexion, thin, broken nails, an enormous scar on her temple, tattoos on her hands. I don't know what happened to you, Missy, but it looks like you've been through hell. Can you tell me something about her? The dizzy spell is harmless, but her general condition is frankly alarming. You seem to know her. What is she suffering from? I don't know exactly, but her father sent her to us in the hope that she would recover all her faculties. It would appear she suffers from episodes of dementia. Is she aggressive? Sometimes, but only toward herself. She has never hit out at anyone else, I can assure you of that. If she wasn't like that this morning. Something must have upset her. That's one way to put it. The poor girl is exhausted, but that's not the cause of her problem. Are you all right, Elizabeth? Do you feel any better? When did she arrive? Uh, four days ago. Okay. My mother had already gone missing. <sighs> She's just regained consciousness and she immediately reaches for her brooch. I don't know exactly what it means to her, but obviously it's got to be something important. Are you all right, Elizabeth? You gave us quite a fright. Take it easy, miss. Let me... I just need to get back to my room. Of course, my dear. Go ahead. You saw it, didn't you? Pardon me? He's saying it de la bestia. Sorry, your eminence. I don't speak Italian. Ah, forget it. It doesn't matter. Gentlemen, it's getting late. It is time for everyone to go to bed. It has been a long day.
It's all the more delicate. I'll see what I can do, but the case I'm on at the moment might well leave me with very few opportunities. Well, I am impressed with all this splendor. But don't spend too much time with Mr. Washington, my dear, or you'll lose your pretty accent. <laughs> <laughs> you seem to be intrigued by that statue. Absolutely. It is remarkable. Oh, it's naughty to tell lies. Bet my life that you were talking about something totally different from the decoration of the manor. But, to find out what, I should have stayed with them. Too bad. Lord Mortimer is fond of atypical works of art. I won't disguise the fact that I find it all a little megalomaniacal. But I must say, he does have some outstanding pieces. So, who was that young lady with you? Elizabeth Adams, Mr. President. She would have liked to have stayed with us, but the poor thing is exhausted. Elizabeth Adams? Just mentioning Elizabeth totally changed Washington's attitude. Looks like he just saw a ghost. Miss Adams is here to rest. You have perhaps already come across her in the corridors. She arrived a few days ago. I perceived her, but we weren't introduced. Rest assured, she is not here for the same reasons as yourselves. Consequently, I'm counting on your indulgence. Washington looks surprised, but Holm doesn't seem to see it. I wonder if he's being polite or if he really doesn't see his discomfort. On that note, it's very late. You must be exhausted. The servant will accompany you to your rooms. Ladies, gentlemen, I bid you all good night. Mr. President, Your Eminence, Duchess, you have the same rooms as usual. You, Monsieur de Richet, will find your room at the end of the corridor. Well, my friends, I am bone tired. I am off to my bed. See you in the morning. Good night, sir. I shall do likewise. Louis, I shall see you in the morning. Sleep well. Good night. See you tomorrow. Oh, man. It's been quite a day. Right. Where is my room? Duchess Emily Hillsborough. Duke Manuel Godoy. Huh, that's me. Right. So what shall I do with this letter? It might be about my mother's disappearance. But if I open it, I'll be betraying Piaggi's trust. What should I do? Okay, let's see what it contains. <laughs> Too bad for Piaggi. So, it really is a list of French countrymen. Piaggi wasn't lying, but now it's opened. I better get it to mother soon. Wow! Nice room. Mortimer sure doesn't do things halfway. Inferno by Dante. Abandon hope, all ye who enter here. Lovely lectures Mortimer is giving to his guests. Very jolly.
Your turn? The servants are not very efficient. Durache can't be far away. They'll find her soon. Their search time is restricted given that they must keep an eye on adults. I can take care of her, you know. Yes. Well, in any case, I do thank you for bringing her to the island. From what I've understood, the search of de Richet's room hasn't turned up any results. Not yet, no. But we've put her son in there. Perhaps he'll find something. Hmm. That might come in handy. Louis grows impatient at not yet having met the famous Lord Mortimer. He will meet him tomorrow. Oh, what a pity to lose a knight at the start of the game. Are you waiting for someone? A young French soldier. During our game of chess? Don't worry, Gregory. The game won't disappear. I'll have one of my men escort you back. Don't trouble yourself. I know my way out. Ah, good evening, gentlemen. Please, forgive me for this late hour. It is never too late. And we have much to discuss. One last move? Don't worry. Our games always seem to end like this. Or always start like this. Come, come. Take a seat, my friend. Nighttime stroll, Mr. President? There's nothing like it for a good night's sleep. Do not hesitate to ask a servant to show you back. The corridors seem quite safe. Peppermint, lime flower, and valerian. My miracle remedy when one can't get to sleep. A very good night to you, Mr. President. Thank you. And to you too, sir. Excuse me, am I bothering you? No, not in the least. Is something wrong? I'm going to need your help. Do you remember the young lady we spoke of in the hall? I bumped into her in the small salon before. Well, she is the daughter of my friend, the Vice President, John Adams. But she is supposed to be dead. Yeah, that's bizarre. Fair enough. Good heavens! I was present at her funeral. It is disturbing indeed. Yes. I need to make sure it's her. That's where you come in. I want you to distract Elizabeth while I search her room, and perhaps get my hands on some important information. At least, I hope so. Elizabeth is in the small salon. If you hurry, you can still catch her. I just need ten minutes. But if my vision is true, there are two men nearby discussing very important issues, and one of them looks much like Mortimer. Washington is very kind, but I came to this island for my mother, not for his ghost stories. Sir, I, I don't feel well. I'm going to have to decline. I see. Well, I hope you won't be needing my help one day. I must act swiftly. I'll search my room later. Strength from your objective. Monsignor, his eminence, Cardinal Piaggi.
Duke Manuel Godoy. I recognize this part of the corridor. I'm close. Duchess Emily Hillsborough. Good evening, sir. I'm sorry, but an important meeting is underway. My instructions are to let no one pass. I see. So that's where it's happening in that room. I've just got to find a way in there. Tell me, my good man, sir. Huh? Whose room is this? A guest. Apparently, a French soldier. All right. Perhaps I should change my approach. I have an urgent letter to send. My instructions are clear, sir. No one is to enter. Does the word urgent mean nothing to you? Yes, but the word liar also means something. That won't work, Lewis. Listen, I'm an insomniac, and Sir Holm told me that you could go to the kitchen and make me a cup of herbal tea. And what is in this herbal tea, sir? Holm gave Washington a recipe for a sleeping drought. What was it again? Peppermint, clover, and celery powder? You won't sleep with that, sir. Tell me, my good man. Sir? I don't recognize anything in here. This must not be the room for my vision. Find the other room. Sir, I understand your eagerness, but the pressure on my family complicates the task. Relax, my friend. Your relatives will soon be huh. safe. So what I saw in my vision really did happen. <sighs> well, I hope I haven't missed anything important. I thank you so much. Don't mention it. Now that's settled, let us speak about your support. Yes. You mentioned earlier some assistance from the Golden Order? Absolutely. I have concluded an agreement with their leader, Lady Sarah Faustine du Richet. Another case that Mother didn't tell me about. The funds from the Order will finance the building of a foundry in Tuscany. You will soon be able to count on a hundred or more cannons for your future campaigns. I... Uh, I was not expecting so much help from you. Uh, when can I meet this uh, de Richet? Well, unfortunately, something has cropped up. De Richet has disappeared. Disappeared? What? Here? Yes, but the staff are redoubling efforts to find her, I assure you. So the agreement, is it on or off? It is on. Her right-hand man has just arrived here to help us find her. And it is none other than her son, Louis Maurras de Richet. I wager he will ensure his mother's commitments are made. Louis, not an easy name to live with in these times. <laughs> of course. But from now on, you will deal with him. This man, it can only be Mortimer. Very well. I will seek him out. Ma'am. Well, I 
Better get away from here. I can explain. Perhaps, but remain so. But, but first, you could perhaps remove the blade from my throat? You have ten seconds to explain your presence here. I'm not here for you. What are you doing in my room? I, I thought a night stroll would help me sleep better. A servant must have closed the window behind me and- And my window is the only way for you to get back inside. Most convincing. What were you really doing on the balcony? Seeing the window open, I feared someone had entered your room. With what I'd heard next door, I had every reason to believe that your life was in danger. I am a grown woman, but how kind of you to worry about me. Now that I'm safe and sound, tell me more. Has this anything to do with the Order? Oh, yes. Washington informed me you were part of the Order. You too? You're part of this too? Yes. Now answer. Do these events concern me? Do they involve the Golden Order? I overheard a conversation between a French soldier and some other individual. And what were they talking about? It seems Mother is involved. Something about a military campaign? Apparently my mother validated an order of cannons to help this man. Really? Since when does the Order finance wars? As far as I know, since never. Did they give any details? A date? What they were for? Nothing at all. Did you know anything about this? No, but I won't forget. Thank you. All right, Louis. I might have overreacted a bit. Please do excuse me. But next time, please try knocking on my door. I'd be delighted to open it for you. Oh, well, I'll remember in that case. Good night, Emily. Good night, Louis. Your Eminence, what are you doing here? I wanted to speak to you about something important. Do you still have my letter on you? The one I gave you in the hall? Why do you ask? I have a name to add to it. Here, here it is. You opened it! Don't worry about that, Your Eminence. You gave me your word, before God! I can assure you that my mother and I share everything. That's enough! Your word is worthless. I give your mother this letter myself. Exhausted. I better go to bed. I'll search my room tomorrow. If Mother stayed here right before me, you never know. And Mortimer had better show up. vision yesterday, I saw that Mother had this room before me. I'd better search the room. Who knows? Maybe she left me something behind.
last judgment. Why do I always get the most terrifying room? Writing material. From what I see, no ink's ever been used on this quill. The smell reminds me of something. It smells like lemon. That's odd. The incredulity of St. Thomas. Why is Caravaggio representing St. Thomas putting his finger in the wound? Thomas looks on, but doesn't touch. Inspiration of St. Matthew, or Matthew writing his gospel, dictated to him by voices. Dear Monsieur de Richet, please excuse me, but I am unable to join you at present. However, rest assured that we are doing all we can to resolve the case that concerns us. By the way, enclosed, you will find a key that will enable you to retrieve the personal effects your mother left behind. Yours faithfully, Lord William Mortimer. St. Francis of Assisi in ecstasy, before superior voices. Saturn devouring his son. Again? I saw the same theme in the hall. I wouldn't like to be his son. There's a circle around the lock here. Must be the trunk Mortimer was talking about. The key should open it. a note. Effects of Sœur de Richer to be given to her son, Louis. I should probably take it. on the floor. Uh, just a bit worn out. I was hoping to find something leading to a secret passage. Oh, this bookcase is well stocked. Oh, this book has been put back the wrong way round. A Voyage Around the World. The travel log of the explorer, Louis Antoine de Bougainville. One of Mother's favorite books. What a coincidence. And I don't believe in coincidences. It's just too much. I don't know what's going on here, but if you felt threatened, I'll bet you'd leave a clue, wouldn't you, Mother? Found it. A faint sign of the order. Barely visible. Mother, you undoubtedly must have hidden a clue in this book. Let's see if I can find anything else in this room. Paper's rougher around the writing. The paper's moist here. Very light stain, barely visible. And the smell reminds me of something. 
Come on, Louis, think. Think. Let's recap. My mother was in this room. I found a rare edition of her favorite book. She must have left something behind. She applied a liquid to the book. She must have used the writing materials. The quill has been used, but not with regular ink. A message using invisible ink. I bet she used a limit to leave a message. Now, how do I reveal the message? a serious mess here. It's no good. It might have worked if the writing had left marks in the paper, but no, there's only traces of lemon. Luckily, I've only put ash on part of the message. here. I wouldn't mind a nice strong coffee though. Inferno by Dante. Abandon hope all ye who enter here. Lovely lectures Mortimer's giving to his guests. Very jolly. Let's see what my mother wrote. Where all eyes size you up, you must pass by the Gorgon. Gorgon was the name of Medusa in Greek mythology. On the other hand, where all eyes size you up, I don't get it. And judging by the number of paintings in the manor, could be anywhere. Damn! The message continues, but thanks to me, the rest of the text is unreadable. Great. I hope it wasn't a unique addition or mother's gonna kill me. Now I better hurry and find that damn Medusa. Sir, dinner is served in the Red Salon. Typical. I'm not hungry. Please give my apologies to all the guests. Uh, Sir Holm requests your presence, sir. Well, I guess I'm just gonna have to wait before going and looking for my Medusa. Tell him I'll be there in a minute. If I get a chance, I may have to take a little tour through the rooms of the other guests. It might be better to take a different stairway. That must be the door to the room of the soldier I saw in my vision. Excuse me, Monsieur de Richet. I really need to talk to you. Hello. 
You're Elizabeth Adams, aren't you? Yes. I regret that we haven't been properly introduced. If you don't mind me asking, what happened to your eye? I had a bad fall. Looks more like a punch to me. My eye's nothing. Last night, I found out that your mother was on the island. What are you doing here? Excuse me, but speaking frankly, why would you care? I know your mother very well. Really? Yes. I have been in your mother's care ever since I was born. She nursed you. Oh, I wouldn't say nursed. No, I remember her stare, cold as ice. Her sadistic hands pressing over my mouth to silence me while I screamed in pain. I remember her knees, too. She held me down with them while she cut and burned scars into me. Hold on a minute. What do you mean? You can ask her when you see her. Huh, she's getting more and more agitated. And next you're gonna tell me my mother's also responsible for that scar on your head? My heart stopped twice during the operation. I lost my memory for six months. You obviously have no idea of the abuse your mother inflicted on me. Wait, there must be some kind of mistake. My only mistake was ever meeting your mother. She's able to describe every detail without hesitation or getting flustered. It's becoming difficult not to believe the poor girl. Look, I've... I've gotta go. Wait. I, I need to know more about you and my mother. Why did she put you through all of that? There must be some reason for what she did. What's the point of rubbing salt in the wounds? I want to find out what really happened. No, you really don't want to know what your mother did when I shed my first blood at puberty. On the contrary, you can tell me anything. Let me be my own judge. I know your little game. You're no different from the rest of them. You couldn't give a damn about me. The only thing you're interested in is finding out about your mother. Don't say that. Not, not everyone wants to use you. Some people care about you, don't they? Take your father. I'm sure he tried everything to save you. Sure, he tried everything. To keep me from upsetting his political affairs. Once I was declared insane, I was nothing but a burden that got in the way of his career. By leaving me with your mother, he made all the horrors possible. Your mother, for example. You mean the woman who left me in the hands of your mother? The woman whose duty it was to give up her life to protect me? I disowned my mother when I turned 13. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I shouldn't have mentioned her. I've got nothing more to say to you. Figure it out yourself. can I do for you, sir? I am at your service, day and night, sir. I would like to speak about your master, Lord Mortimer. Do please excuse me, sir, but I shall make no comment about my master. Is there anything else that sir would like to know? What can you tell me about the guests? Do excuse me, sir. But I am bound by discretion to say nothing about Lord Mortimer's guests, sir. Perhaps, sir, uh, would like to know something else? As I was unable to bring my personal effects with me, I was wondering if you could find me a few items. Of course, sir. What would you require?
What's that book you're hiding in your jacket? The Sorrows of Young Werther, by Goethe, sir. And I am not hiding it. Hand it to me, please. It is damaged, sir. I would never dare lend sir a book in such a pitiful state, sir. I took it to restore. Friends, I bid you welcome. I hope the night was not too short. Your Eminence, Duchess, Monsieur de Richet, allow me to introduce our new guests. They arrived during the night. Johann Christoph von Wollner, Minister of Religious Affairs and close aide of Frederick William II, King of Prussia. Napoleon Bonaparte, Lieutenant of the French Revolutionary Army and Jacques Peru, French Revolutionary Tribunal Judge. Unfortunately, my friends, Lord Mortimer will not be joining us this morning, but he should be with us later. So, let us begin. What is Mortimer playing at? He tells me to come urgently and he sends no one to meet me? <laughs> and right he was too. Thank you again for the wine, Your Eminence. It is served every day at the King's table. I am delighted. Volner and Piaggi seem to be getting along well. My dear Johan, how are you? Glad to make landfall at last. And yourself? Very well. And your husband? He's poorly. The French Revolution gives him terrible headaches. Oh, I understand. I shall feel better too, as soon as the situation is settled. If by chance the French crisis is emulated in Berlin, there will always be a refuge for you in London, my dear. Your offer does you honor, Emily. But London <laughs> is much closer to Paris than Berlin. Beware. The French are capable of sailing up the Thames straight to the Houses of Parliament. Oh, my friend, oh. I am shaking in my clogs. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. no. The Prussian Britannic coalition is not good for France. The last time we fought against them, our empire went up in smoke. Is the wine to your liking? Very much so, Sir Gregory. Such complexity. Typically French. A Sauterne, isn't it? Absolutely. If I'm not mistaken, this is not Lord Mortimer's favorite wine. It is yours. In his absence, I have taken the liberty of making a slight deviation from the rule. But I count on your discretion. <laughs> Don't worry. I appreciate the same grape varieties as you. I remember the last time we tasted that nectar here at this table. The finest minds of the century were present. And the last time we drank it, the orphanage in Bloomsbury was still in ruins. Would... would you repeat that? Oh, well, uh, I put some small <laughs> effort into the works. The orphanage reopened just before Christmas. <laughs> the bedrooms, washrooms, and the classrooms had all been refurbished. I... I don't know what mm -hmm. to say. You have given the girls a wonderful <laughs> Christmas gift. Thank you. I made a promise. Now Thank it is done. Long. <laughs> it's the first time I've ever seen her so moved. Just mention that orphanage broke right through Emily's hard shell. Is everything all right? Yes, thank you. I had a moment of absence, but here I am again. Oh dear. <laughs> what do you think of Volner? The Prussian king is his puppet. I find it hard to believe the king of Prussia is so weak. Be careful. Volner is as influential as he is dangerous. You seem to know each other well. We used to work together. I see. <laughs> yeah. 
Yes, I heard the news. What a storm. <laughs> Have you any information on this Napoleon? And right he was too. Oh, oh, oh. Uh -huh. Mortimer has arranged to keep his family out of the harmful reach of Corsican monarchists. Interesting. And that's not all. Mortimer and my mother have apparently agreed to deliver cannons to this Bonaparte. What? Since when does the order finance wars? Are you sure? Unfortunately, yes. And the fact you didn't know my mother made this agreement makes it even stranger. Thank you, Louis. At least you have taught me something. Don't mm -hmm. you so? Monsieur de Richet, mm -hmm. it would seem we have common interests. Could we speak in private, please? Lord Mortimer and the Golden Order, through your mother, have concluded a financial agreement. Stay composed, Louis. I'm listening. An agreement for cannons. Lord Mortimer assured me that you are to take over the project on behalf of your mother. You must know that I am deeply sorry about their disappearance, but I must validate the deal urgently if I want to be able to organize things properly. I haven't seen Lord Mortimer yet. I'm afraid I'll be unable to answer your questions. He assured me that you could replace your mother during her absence. I appreciate his confidence, but still, this is a bit hasty. But please continue. Of course, but I need to know if I can count you among my allies. Well, of course. And for that, I have a little question for you. The agreement stipulates an aid of 50,000 Louis d'Or for 200 cannon. Absolutely. 50,000 Louis d'Or in hard cash. The offer I'm talking about was for only 20,000 Louis d'Or, Monsieur de Richet. The truth is, you really have no idea about our agreement. So, you're wasting my time. I need to work with people I can have confidence in, sir. The exact numbers may have escaped me. I suggest you wait for my mother's return in order to manage such details. I have one last question I would like to pose to you. We don't know each other yet, you and I. And I need to make sure that we both share the same vision for the future of France. Given the hard times that have befallen our beautiful country, what do you think it would take to restore its uh, luster? I think what France is lacking today is a truly strong leader ready to govern her. Someone who will restore her luster, who will propel her forward so once again she becomes a proud nation respected by all. A man capable of both rebuilding the country from the inside and, at the same time, developing exterior relations. Someone with a vision, I think. The right person still remains to be found. You're right, my friend. I hear your words and I agree. Monsieur de Richer, I am reassured. I am very happy to have met you. Lord Mortimer was right to put his trust in you. I hope to work with you in the very near future. I would like to thank you for your support by offering you this humble little gift. Hmm. Reflections on the revolution in France. Monsieur Bonaparte, I thank you for this gesture, and please know that I, too, am delighted to have met you. My friends, I would like to say a few words, please. I would like to thank Lord Mortimer, and you, Sir Holm, for bringing us all together here. Those of us for whom it is not the first time here, like me, are all trembling in sweet anticipation of the arrival of our host. For the rest, I would like to reassure you that Lord Mortimer always has a few surprising projects to propose. <laughs> but I can assure you that each and every one of us has always benefited from them. <laughs> the last time I came to this place, Lord Mortimer offered to help me in my electoral campaign for the presidency of the United States. 
and it is imminently clear that his support was an invaluable aid to us. We are here among like-minded people. So let us put aside the conflicts in which some of our nations find themselves at present. So I raise my glass in honor of you all, my new and old friends. I trust you shall not be disappointed, Mr. Washington. Right, we shall meet again tomorrow. All the guests will be present, as well as Lord Mortimer, I hope. Until then, I trust you will find plenty to keep you amused. All right, let's recap. Before dinner, I was going to investigate my mother's message. I've got to find the place where all eyes size you up. Well, Your Eminence, do you still have any room left? Ah, my son, the sin of gluttony is the most difficult of all in my eyes. Nevertheless, what a charming moment we have had together. I'm delighted I was able to talk to Mr. Von Waldner. We hadn't spoken to each other for an eternity. Yes, I noticed that Your Eminence knew a fair number of people at the table. The benefit of age, my son. This isn't my first invitation to Lord Mortimer's. You will see, it's the perfect place to make new friends. Indeed, I noticed that you and Mr. Bonaparte had already begun. Ah, I adapt quickly to local customs. It's what I was taught. <laughs> and you are right to do so, my son. But tell me, have you had any news of your mother since your arrival? <sighs> Alas, still nothing, your minutes. But I still haven't been able to meet Lord Mortimer. Do not worry. It is typical of him. What can I say? Lord Mortimer is a very busy man. I should think you are beginning to worry. To tell you the truth, not really. You are right. Be positive. Perhaps Sarah is in the company of Lord Mortimer and they will both turn up shortly. <laughs> but while I have you with me, I, I have a question for you. Well, go ahead, Louis. What can I do for you? If I said to you, where all eyes size you up, would it mean anything to you? I don't know if it's the place you're looking for, Louis, but it makes me think of the portrait gallery. There's a gallery here? Can you tell me where to find it, please? Of course. Just go through the door at the end. It will lead into the library. Continue all the way through, and you'll end up in the gallery. You'll see it, Louis. When you get there, you'll know. Thank you very much, Your Eminence. On that last word, then I shall leave you to fight your demons. See you later, Your Eminence. See you later, my son.
before all eyes size you up. Chances are, that's the room my mother spoke of. And she also spoke of a Medusa. Should I go and try to find the creature now? was trying to do with her. The Medusa. A hero armed with a sword. Hmm. A hero with a lantern. And the last one holding a shield. I'll stake my life on it. All the statues form a single scene together. The poor devils are about to face the beast. Let's give them a helping hand. Origin of myths, a reinterpretation of legendary creatures. Just what I need. The text is in French on the left hand page and in Latin on the right hand. Let's find the chapter on the Medusa. Hang on. This version is significantly different from the regular one. It recounts how men have always belittled women in society. Harpies, mermaids, the chimera, the hydra, the gorgons. Ah, the section on the Medusa. While some of the heroes divert attention from the gorgon, the hero with the sword brandishes his weapon at the Medusa. right, but nothing's happening. Maybe, in this position, the hero with the shield is just dazzling his colleague. If I respect the legend, I have to place the hero holding the shield in front of the Medusa. Except for here, it doesn't work. There must be something else.
For Pete's sake, Emily. You scared the pants off me. Don't ever do that again. Well, keep your nose out of my business then. I don't know what you're talking about. First my room, now here. Stop following me, you're becoming a nuisance. Wait a minute, are you... You're not implying that I'm here to court you, are you? Oh, Louis, I'm just stating the obvious. You wouldn't be the first, rest assured. Yeah, this is embarrassing. The worst thing is it, it seems to be working. Stop fooling around and tell me what you're doing here. Oh yeah? So tell me what you're doing here. I'm just... I mean, I... Yeah, just like me. Probably, but I asked the question first. Well then, we'll pretend you haven't asked me yet. What about a little gallantry, Louie? Come on, I'm listening. What are you doing here? Since you insist, Duchess, gallantry obliges this. Ladies first. You just won't give in, will you? I'm sorry, madam. It isn't in my nature. Well, no matter. I'll tolerate your presence this one time. Now, since you're here, make yourself useful. Look around on your side. I'll do the same on mine. And if you find anything of interest, let me know. Oh, yeah, in your dreams. At your service, madam. Golden Fleece. It's freezing. Hurry up. Do you think that can really be Jason's Golden Fleece? No. You are aware that Jason and the Argonauts is a myth, aren't you? But Mortimer's been protecting this hide. It must be of great value, don't you think? Certainly of historical value. This kind of hide is still used by gold diggers in Eastern Europe. Now you see how easy it is to obtain a legend. Why do you have to act so nonchalant every time I show you something? Louis, anyone can kill a sheep, rip off its hide, and say it's the Golden Fleece. We're at Lord Mortimer's, not at some farmyard fair. You're just too skeptical. And you have a tendency to believe anything. Talk about an unlikely pair. Yet, you know opposites attract, don't you? An unofficial gospel? You'd be more likely to find this kind of book at the Vatican. Nothing special. The library at Buckingham has three. Gee, is there anything England doesn't have yet? Wait. Yes, there is. The United States. Well, not yet. Besides, as far as I know, they don't speak French in the United States. Hey, Mortimer is the author of this work. He talks about his passion for art. Guess what I found? The Holy Grail. Older than that. A piece of Noah's Ark. Not that old. This could go on for hours. Just tell me. Caesar's laurel wreath. Do you know why laurel wreaths are used and not, say, mistletoe or another plant? The laurel wreath symbolized glory in Roman times. In your opinion, what kind would suit me best? A crown of nettles. Well, looks like a pamphlet on different political regimes, written by Mortimer himself. You should see this sword, Emily. It's magnificent. I'm busy. Describe it to me. This weapon is typically French, quite old, undoubtedly goes back to the Crusades. 
If it is a true damask sword, it's worth more than a kingdom. I think this is Excalibur, King Arthur's sword. I've always dreamt of drawing it from the stone. How sweet, you're still clinging to your boyhood dreams. When you finished playing, maybe you can help me search the place? Amber crystals. Here's something interesting. A manor in Maine, hundreds of acres of land in Catalonia, properties in Shanghai. Incredible. Some of these deeds are over 600 years old and all signed by the hand of Mortimer. I wonder if that's what inspired my mother's attention. How come all these documents have Mortimer's signature on them? Do you think all these properties really belong to him? See those fine scratches around the words? Yes, and? The ink barely spreads on the paper. It spreads exactly the same way on the signature. The deed was written using the same ink. If it is a fake, then it's a professional job. Probably, but that doesn't mean they weren't stolen. But Mortimer's signature, it looks genuine. Maybe he erased the original ones and signed his name instead. These documents are intriguing, but do you really think that's what attracted your mother's attention here? And how do you know my mother was interested in this room? I didn't know, I just supposed she was. And you just confirmed it. So, do you think she found what she came for? I don't know. She was obsessed with Mortimer and... I must confess, these property deeds are troubling. If that's the case, why would she have left them? Once again, I don't know. We'll have to ask her when we find her. And what's your take? How did Lord Mortimer get all this? It's just crazy. Secret connections, money, or a well-kept family treasure passed on from generation to generation. Who knows? That would mean some of Mortimer's ancestors lived before Jesus was born. I wonder why my mother didn't make it clear what she was interested in here. She didn't have time to write it down, or maybe she wasn't sure of what she was looking for. Or she wanted to protect her discoveries. It's disturbing. You'll just have to search the rest of the room. Maybe you'll find something. What is that you found? A cameo pendant. What's going on? Nothing. For crying out loud, Emily, you lunged for that jewel like your life depended on it. Tell me what this is about. No. I can't trust a man who sneaks into my room in the middle of the night. Are you really going to use that against me every time we meet? It's difficult to pretend nothing happened. We just met, Louis. I like you, but I can't just suddenly open myself up like a book to you. Listen, Emily. It seems pretty obvious to me that you haven't come here for the sole purpose of sampling Mortimer's cellar. Stop all the clever evasions and just trust me. And why the hell should I place my trust in you, Louis? When are you going to understand that I just want to help you? What do you expect? That I'll fall into your arms and say yes to everything you want? What are you talking about? I'm only asking you to trust me a little. If only on principle, as a member of the Golden Order, for example. I'll admit you are fairly reliable. That's it? I was expecting more. Well, I'm prepared to trust you when it comes to choosing a French cheese. But I've nothing to gain by confiding in you any further than that. Nothing to gain? Damn it, Emily! I'm only trying to help you. Stop needing to gain something all the time. Because you think I need help? Just like everyone. You have your strengths and your weaknesses, and there's no use pretending otherwise. Ha! And I bet you found out where I'm weak, haven't you?
Let's take your subterfuge talents, for example. You can't make me believe you'd be very effective at sneaking around unobserved, dressed as you are in that puffy whalebone dress. I do find your outfits ravishing, but couldn't you use someone like me to perform certain discreet tasks? Louis, Louis, your naivety is almost touching. Since our arrival, I have been continuously exploring the island without anyone realizing. Know that in a man's world, it is sometimes more efficient to wear a dress with a daring décolletage than to know how to pick a lock. I might have some weaknesses, but I don't need your help to overcome them. And I'm simply not contemplating collaborating with anyone at this time. Do you understand? Oh, it's crystal clear. You don't like people telling you what to do, and you do like giving the orders to everyone. If I were the matron you speak of, I would have found an underling to search this place, and I would be sound asleep in my bed. I already have a work partner. I know my weaknesses. I don't doubt that your abilities will be of use to me, but I already have all that, thanks to my teammate. Is there any chance you might tell me who he is? No, I've already said too much. Consider yourself lucky I've even given you this much. It's extremely rare, believe me. Come on, don't stop now that you've come this far. You know that eventually I'll end up making you talk. Well, since no one can resist you, let's see if you can guess who my partner is. You're a gambler. So, your partner is... It's as obvious as it is surprising. You're my mother's hard-hitting partner. Oh, God, do you really believe the nonsense that comes out of your mouth? Well, a second ago I did, a little. Sorry, Louis, your mother is not my partner. Chances are, you're working with a member of the Order. The only members of the Order, other than ourselves, are your mother and Mr. Washington. The former has sadly gone missing. As for the latter, I knew nothing of his arrival. Incidentally, you must have noticed how inefficiently our Order communicates internationally. Right, time is short. You haven't convinced me. I prefer to remain discreet. Don't take it the wrong way. All I can tell you is I'm looking for my sister. And if I reacted so strongly at the sight of the cameo pendant, it's because I thought it belonged to her. But it doesn't. I understand. I won't insist. It's time to leave. So, what do you think of our first adventure? I must admit it has been fun by your side. Same here. She's been drinking too much again. Louie, I need to talk to you right now. Good evening, Elizabeth. Actually, this is not a good time. I'm begging you, please, don't leave me alone. I'll be waiting for you in your room, but don't be late. I was sure there was a certain je ne sais quoi between us. Louie, we need to talk now. Otherwise, it'll be too late. Looks like Elizabeth really needs me, but... If I start talking to her, for sure Emily won't wait for me. What should I do? Sorry, Emily, but I can't leave Elizabeth like this. All right, Elizabeth. How can I help? Thank you. Come on, follow me. Well, Elizabeth, what was so urgent? For God's sakes, what happened in here? I really need...
need to talk to you, Louis, right now. Does Lord Mortimer know the mess you've made of your room? Listen to me, damn it! My days are numbered. All right. What have you got on your mind now? You've got to listen to what I have to say while there's still time. You need to know the truth about your mother. About my mother? What do you mean? I saw her. Saw who? You saw my mother? When? Just last night. I went out to walk along the cliff top and I saw her in the distance. She tried to hide right away, but I'm sure it was her. Are you saying you recognized my mother in the middle of the night while she was hiding? Yes, Louis. I know it was her. You just said she was far away, right? In the middle of the night. And the exterior of the island isn't exactly well lit. Listen, I'm telling you it was her. She doesn't hesitate on her answers. She's not trembling. She's really convinced of what she's seen. Did you talk to each other? No, she was far away. I, I didn't make any noise, and then she was gone. Have you told anyone you've seen her? Sir Holm? Mortimer? You don't understand. It's her. She's here. Yes, I understand. No, you're not listening. The moment I saw her, I was overcome by spasms. She's here. I'm telling you, it was her. Yes, I need something to calm me down. I'll drink with you, but let's go easy on it, okay? I don't know where she gets her rot cut from, but frankly, it's disgusting. You know, Louis, when I came here, it was in the hope of getting help. I've only just now realized that I've been drawn here into a trap. Whoa, the alcohol's <laughs> gone to my head. Here, the condemned's last drink. Elizabeth, alcohol never solves anything. I'm gonna stop now. Listen up. You want to know what your mother was capable of, right? You want to know the reason why? Well, you're gonna have to follow me to the bottom of the abyss, Louie. Either drink or get out. Man, I... I need to take it easy with the booze. At this rate, I won't last the night. Let's go easy on the drinking, okay? Alcohol won't solve our problems. Ugh, the second one isn't any easier. So, do you want to know why she did all those things to me or not? Even if it changes the image you have of her forever? What was she trying to cure you of then? Of the one illness she never managed to treat me for. Come on, Elizabeth. We have to finish what we started. I feel all dizzy. There must have been a reason. Just tell me. Tell me what my mother treated you for. She wanted to silence them. W what What are you talking about? Silence what? The voices. The voices in my head. They speak to me, Louis. They've always told me what to do. They say nasty things to me. Elizabeth, are, are you saying that that spirits talk to you? You're right. Sometimes there are several voices. How did you know? No, listen, I, I don't know anything. I, I'm just repeating what you said. They want me. Want me just for themselves. They talk to me all the time. Yet your mother did everything to make them go away. Ever since I was little. And look at the result. It's impossible, mother. You spent your life trying to prove that the supernatural doesn't exist. Why punish this poor girl? Oh, shit. What has she done to you? Uh-oh, Louie. Are you starting to believe me? No, but... Too bad it's all been for nothing. They're still there, you know. 
What do you mean? They're still talking to you? All the time. Despite everything Sarah put me through, I still hear them. And here I am on a lost island, knowing that no one knows me. And I find myself here at the exact same time as her. You see? You understand? You sense it too. I'm going to die here. I beg you, tell me you believe me. I'm here, Elizabeth. I'm right here with you. And I do believe you. Thank you, Louis. You know, despite what people might think, I'm not crazy. My God, Elizabeth, how is this possible? Welcome to my world, little Louie. Welcome to my life. Let's not rush into things. You have nothing to fear here. I'm with you. And anyway, my mother's gone missing. You're not in any danger. That's not what the voices say. Listen to me. Don't give up. You must resist. And tomorrow, you'll see. Things will be better. You like my little concoction, don't you? That's rare. What? It no longer has any effect on me. But my guests generally don't appreciate me mixing alcohol with laudanum. What? You put laudanum in my drink? In both. Don't worry, my little Louie. We'll sink down to the bottom together. Oh, man. I feel like puking. I really feel like shit. Uh, I gotta get back. Don't worry, Louie. I'm here now. I'll take good care of you. What is this bitch gonna do to me? Don't touch me! Just le If I get up, I'll fall. Oh, little Louie's tired. Leave everything to me. Mademoiselle, may I come in? Ah, my head. I shouldn't have drunk so much. Oh, shit. <laughs> 